Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and what does a lemon, Gatorade, potatoes, ocean water, vinegar, and sulfuric acid all have in common? Well, all of these are electrolytes. They are substances that can conduct an electric current. So let's suppose I have a little conductivity tester here, which consists of some copper wire hooked up to these electrodes, which is also hooked up to this little light bulb right here. And I take these electrodes and I stick it in this lemon right here. What's going to happen to this light bulb right here? Well, the light bulb is going to light up because the citric acid that is in the solution is electrolytic or in the substance is electrolytic. It conducts an electric current. Same with the Gatorade. If I stick these electrodes in this Gatorade here, uh, this solution here is, is, is electrolytic and that too is going to cause this light bulb to, uh, to shine as well. Same with the potato, potatoes, same with the ocean water, same with the vinegar, and same with the sulfuric acid. So today, people, we're talking about electrolytes, and let's take a look at the hows and whys. If we take a look at these three beakers here, we have a beaker of pure H2O here, we have a beaker of sugar water here, and we have a beaker of salt water here. And we notice that in two of these beakers here, uh, the solution is not completing this circuit here. We have some copper wire that's hooked up to this battery that's hooked up to this light bulb here. And we notice that in two of these beakers, the light bulb is off. Okay, we notice that the light bulb is off right here. And we notice that the light bulb is off here as well. Well, what's happening here? These solutions, or this pure H2O right here, and this sugar water right here, is not conducting an electric current, and therefore it's not it's not going to allow this light bulb to glow. However, right here we'll notice we notice that the the light bulb is pretty bright, right? It's been turned on. Well, why is this solution here conducting an electric current whereas over here in these two beakers of water and this solution of sugar water here, the light bulbs are off. Well, let's take a look at what's happening. In order for an electro a solution to be electrolytic in nature, it has to have free floating positive and negative ions floating around in there to allow the electrons that travel down this wire to be propagated through this solution and into this wire here and eventually turn on this light bulb right here. So what kind of solutions are going to produce ions when they uh, are put in water? Well, in, last, in the last video we talked about ionic compounds. Right? We talked about ionic compounds like NaCl or sodium chloride or table salt right when we put table salt in water we learned from the last video that this sodium chloride here is going to dissociate it's going to break apart into two free floating ions floating around in this water right here we're going to have sodium ions and we're going to have chloride ions floating around in this water right here and that's what allows this solution to be uh, an electrolyte and conduct an electric current and turn on this light right here if we take a look at the sugar water over here, sugar is not an ionic compound, right? In the last video, we talked about how when you place sugar in water, it doesn't dissociate, it does not break apart, it stays together. And therefore, you don't have positively and negatively charged ions floating around in this water or in the solution right here. And therefore, this is not going to conduct an electric current and the light's going to stay off. And same with the pure H2O. Well, there's no free floating positively charged ions or negatively charged ions in this water right here that will allow the, uh, the electrons that flow down this wire through this solution to transfer to this wire and eventually turn on this this little uh, this light bulb right here. So uh, these two guys are non-electrolytes. We'll go ahead and put that right here. These will be non your non-electrolytes. And over here, you're going to have an electrolyte, a solution that can conduct an electric current. So whenever you have an ionic compound and it dissolves in water, it's going to dissociate and produce these positively and negatively charged ions floating in that solution. So let's take a look at the difference between weak electrolytes and strong electrolytes. If we take a look at each of these three pictures here, we'll notice that every one of these is, is electrolytic in nature. It conducts an electric current and the light bulb is on in each one of these scenarios here. However, what we will notice is that with this light bulb right here, it's very dimly lit. And with this light bulb right here, it's very brightly lit. 
So why is this one dim and why is this one bright? Well, that has to do with the concentration of the ions that are in the solution. In a weak electrolyte, we're going to have a very low concentration of positively and negatively charged ions floating around in this water here or in this solution right here. And as we work this way, if we go from left to right here, we'll notice that the concentration of the ions increases and over here we have a very high concentration very high concentration of ions that are floating around in this solution so as the concentration of the ions increases so will the uh, the brightness of this light bulb and so will the uh, the 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 strength of the electrolyte. Over here we have a weak electrolyte which has a low concentration of, hydrogen, or of uh, positively and negatively charged ions whereas over here we have a strong electrolyte which has a high concentration of positively and negatively charged ions. So uh, this is electrolytes in a nutshell and I hope you found this helpful.